It's practically life size. It's official. This is going to be a painting. How long are you going to take you to finish everything? I don't know, but it's pretty complicated. This is my largest self portrait yet. When I tell you this was the most freeing and liberating experiment, I just hope all the energy I feel comes forth in this painting. Hello, hello, and thank you so much for joining me on this finale to finish up this big, big painting and this self-portrait. It's been a beautiful journey so far. All that's left is to take care of the bottom section, the feet, <laughs> the toes, and then I'm going to focus on all of the touch-ups and just bringing it together as a whole. I've been thinking to do a wash of color over the whole thing. Once I decide to do that, there's no going back. So will I do it or not? Mm, I guess we'll find out. So let's set up the paints and finish this big baby up. So as I'm painting these toes, <laughs> it's just so funny to say, the main goal is maximum softness. Soften, 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 soften those edges, softness. Achieving softness is always challenging, but using certain tools, brushes, and mixtures can help you do the trick. Building up thousands of layers, mixing the correct value and color, Getting the likeness and nailing the lighting takes way more brain power and energy than you may realize. Every little stroke is consisted of these like little hashes that I like to do. And with these hashes, I'm able to kind of blend away and form out the shape, whatever it is. And it's also nice for skin because it gives you that texture that skin has. Skin isn't completely smooth. We have all these pores and little crevices. So it's nice to kind of do it with these little strokes. And I do it with a thin brush eventually. And I build up and I build up. And this takes lots and lots of time. I found it quite helpful to have one brush to apply the paint and then another brush to blend. Delicately interchanging the two allowed me to get the softness I desired. Oh, and don't forget your finger. That can help too. Uh, I just got paint on my pants. So much for my superhero cape, right? So I just had a thought. I had a professor once who told me that hands and feet are the most important in paintings because they're also the most avoided. A lot of people, and I'm guilty of this earlier, I used to put the hands behind the back because I wouldn't want to draw the hands or I would like put shoes on or cut the feet off because I was not drawing or painting feet. If you want a great challenge, definitely practice your hands, practice your feet and don't be scared of it. Tackle those fears. Practice those anatomy skills and you'll be so much better in no time. But wow, uh, taking a step back and looking at it, I'm really liking it so far. There's just a few little things I have to tweak in here and then we'll start the next one. The simplicity of taking a step back and looking at your painting as a whole is a top essential while working on certain sections of a large painting. And I was doing it quite a lot. Laying down drippy washes and working my way from the background to the foreground allowed me to carefully build up all the elements before I begin building up all the details. 
But as I was painting and finishing up the last element, the second foreshortened foot, which was a challenge of its own, I realized that the bottom section was super polished and it was taking a bit of the attention away from the top. So I spent the next few hours touching up the other areas, getting them a bit more polished and laying in some more washes. And I knew that's exactly what it needed. However, during these moments, I came to a very serious dilemma. Do I leave it as is, or do I take that one step further, take a risk, maybe add color? This time, I really wasn't sure. But the more I would sit back and look at it, and look at it some more, I couldn't help but feel like it was missing something. I'm craving color, texture, get the palette knife. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you crazy? Yeah. You cannot do that. It's perfect the way it is. Just leave it. Play it safe. But imagine the oil paint. It's going to bring it all to life. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be buttery. It's going to look good. I don't want to take a risk because if I take the risk, I risk messing it up and I do not want to mess it up. Shh. Nobody needs your nervous energy right now, okay? You know you're gonna be taking a big risk, and if you take that risk, you might mess it up. But if I don't risk it, I'm gonna regret it, and I don't wanna regret anything. Like, whatever happened to self-exploration and getting everything experimented, huh? I think that I'm gonna do it in oil. What if I just ease into it, try it on an iPad, maybe make a plan, and that way it's gonna be safe. What if I just start a little bit of color digitally, okay? Yes, that sounds good. Great idea. Digitally is safe. I'm gonna be able to get bold with some color and try it out. Yes, that sounds good. Great idea. Okay, and I think that's a safe choice, so I'm really glad that we came to this conclusion. We just have to make sure we take it slowly and we make the right decision so that we don't mess it up. Look, whatever I decide, I know that I'm going to fix it. And if I take a big risk, I can feel it. There's going to be reward. Okay, good, good. <gasps> Wait, where are you going? Don't you want to plan it out? Wait for me. I don't know why I felt like my life depended on it, but I figured a few color comps won't hurt. I took a photo on my iPad and brought it right into Procreate, and while I'm doing some digital color studies and trying out a bunch of different options, a quick word from our kind sponsors, Pila. I've been working with Pila for quite some time, and what I love about them is that they make all of their cases from plants, and they have an awesome variety for colors and styles. They make cases for phones, and they have accessories for iPads as well. They're B Corp certified and 1% for the planet, all of their cases are compostable, so you can compost them in the convenience of your home, or you can send it back to Pila so they can do it for you. Pila was super sweet to give us a coupon code, which is Jess. The first 50 subscribers will get 40% off your purchase at Pila, and once that's done, you can still get 25% off. If you love plants, if you love waste-free stuff, Pila makes it much easier to show it, and definitely much easier than making decisions on this next step of the painting. After trying a bunch of different color palettes, asking my patrons for advice, this was my final decision. I have a crazy pull to start in oil. Everything just may either go super uphill from here or downhill, but no risk, no reward, right? Yep, it's happening. I premixed my colors. I took a deep breath. I shook all my nerves off and I just went for it. I knew that this step would bring it to the next level. I really want to keep this to show through. I don't want to lose the underpainting but I do want to get a nice dimension going and push the background back, maybe a shade, and then bring me forward. So that's going to be warm and then around is going to be cool. So let's go for it. Okay. Oh, that's nice. It's nice and transparent so you can see through. 
All right, I like this. To make it feel a bit more safe to start, I began with Galkid Medium, which allows you to make transparent layers and glazes. Adding a tiny bit to my paint, I really wanted to bring in subtlety of color. Oh yeah, and did I mention it was my first time using it? Oh well, I'll figure it out. While I was painting, I realized how much time I just actually added onto this piece. I definitely miscalculated. Blending with the oil paints was such a delicate process, and waiting for each layer to dry, mixing the proper shade of the skin tone, became a lot to handle, and I suddenly entered a stage of the painting where I realized I was being really hard on myself. Wow, I really hope I didn't just uh, mess up the whole painting. After a really long week of painting, I decided to take a moment to slow down and do some reflection. I couldn't believe what I found. Wow, time flies. Crazy to think I've loved drawing tulips since preschool. After seeing my baby drawings, I was filled with so much ambition to get back into the studio. This time, a little less hard on myself and a little more carefree.
feeling like this breakthrough moment. I can't believe this is happening. I never paint this thick. I don't know, I'm just like I'm freaking out right now. Getting intense out here. Just going for that texture. Yeah, you know when you're just feeling heated and everything's going and going, so exactly what's happening. Let's keep it moving. Throughout this journey, I learned a lesson. I learned the importance of catering to your inner child. The one that just wants to play, have fun, do whatever feels good, and trust the outcome is going to be great. Playing with thick marks, texture, little pops of color was slowly growing to be my favorite part of the painting. I felt magical energy in the air, and it suddenly appeared on the painting. At this point, I've lost track of all the days, Today's the day, I think that I'll finish this. It may look finished, but I still, there's so much you can do. I feel like you can work on a painting forever. It's like a bittersweet moment, so I'm really gonna soak in today and finish strong. Okay, another question. What would a little kid do if it suddenly started raining, per se? It just started raining. You know what you gotta do when it starts raining? I gotta be quick. Yeah, welcome to Florida. We got sun three seconds after the rain. As the sun was shining and illuminating the whole room, I felt immense happiness, love, and I allowed that to be a passageway into this self-portrait. I will grow a big garden for you for infinite inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, I'm so proud of you. And I love you so much. I love you more. Yay! <sighs> I think it's done. It's like a very sad but happy, exciting moment. I am absolutely over the moon painting this and I'm so grateful that I get to do this and share it with you. What's left is the final reveal. Let's take a look. It's 
It's all in our hands, this life of time. Let's give unto us all. It gathers round each night, each morn. We watch it pass and grow. It is all in our hands. It is all in our hands. With every field and rising sea, can hear the sounds of all, and with every chance. As this painting adventure approaches the finish line, despite the long journey and roller coaster of emotions, it was exhilarating getting to know myself a bit more through the creation of it. I'd like to take a moment to express my deepest gratitude for coming along this journey with me, for all your warmth, kindness, and support. I hope this painting, which I poured my heart into, reached and touched your heart wherever you are. Change the change